What's going on, everybody? It's Matt, a.k.a. The Lumberjack Landlord, here with his good buddy, Mike Zuber from One Inch at a Time, and he has a post for us. Yeah, so if you watch my channel, you know I have these things called ORAT rules. There are seven of them. Yep. Um, they are all important, some more than others in different cycles. For the last two years, rule number seven has been ignored. Why has it been ignored? It's because everybody was making money. Everybody was having fun. Rule number seven says audit your network. Mm -hmm. Are they helping or hurting you? Mm -hmm. Well, as Greg Dickerson likes to say, good times never last, bad times never last. Well, guess what? We're done with the good. We're in the bad. We've got to get through this. <laughs> so again, rule number seven has gone from being often ignored to probably the most important. To that end, my Sunday expert, Jason Pritchard, the number one investor in my market, put out a post on Instagram. I guess it's an Instagram story. I want to read it to you okay. because it is exactly what I want people to understand. So again, full credit, Jason Pritchard. Uh, here we go. Ready. Now is the time where you should be paying very close attention to how the people in your circle are thinking, talking, and acting. If they're negative, complaining, or playing the role of a victim because of what's happening in the real estate market, I would be very careful with how much time you're spending around them right now. Instead, you need to get around people who are optimistic, driven, and focused on finding creative ways to set themselves up and take advantage of the upcoming opportunities. It's going to get real uncomfortable for a lot of people. Surround yourself with others that are helping you become the best version of yourself. Rule number seven. Rule number seven. Yeah, I think that that's really important advice. And I think that um, if you if you don't have thick skin, you probably shouldn't be a landlord. I mean, a lot of times in the very beginning of it, I took it personally. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's a business and you have to make your business perform. And that requires working with your tenants, fixing things quickly, you know, taking care of situations as they arise, but also recognizing not taking it personally, even though a lot of times it's a personal attack that they're actually, yeah. you know, forging towards you. You know, you're an awful landlord, you're this, that, and the other. I've been called worse and yeah. I would then just suggest to them they're more than welcome to move on from my horrible landlording. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just turn a unit and they complain about the wall color or, I mean, it, it's, um, it's tough, but, but to kind of Jason's point, right. It, it was wildly easy to make money the last two yeah. years in real estate. Uh, it was, uh, and again, Omar and I talked to another expert uh, well over a year ago. It's the best time ever to flip easy money, just printing money. Yeah. And now it's not. No. And there's going to be a lot of flippers that get spanked. There's going to be yeah. a lot of Airbnb arbitrage that get spanked. There's going to be a lot of syndications. There's going to be a lot of pain because investors didn't prepare. Uh, they, their assumptions suck. <laughs> but again, rule number seven, audit your network. Are they helping or hurting? There are people that will be destroyed by this change, pivot. And frankly, they should. They didn't learn the lesson. They have variable rate debt. They have burr, bad burr assumptions. Can you, there will be burrs that blow up that actually lose money, right? Oh, yeah. So you're going to do a burr, do this, do that. You're going to cash out. Nope. Not only can you not cash out, but when you have to be forced to sell it, you don't have to cut a check. Your guy's assumptions suck. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jason's absolutely right. Uh, in the good market of the last two years, everybody's your buddy. Everybody's a friend. Everybody's excited and smiling. Well, guess what? Now inventory, you know, flips are sitting on the market. You're taking price drops on flips. You're, you're having appraisals come in low. Uh, you have interest rates at, at seven and a half versus five and a half. You're being, it's just all kinds of negativity. The housing depression is real, but the people that get through this, you know, creative financing or all the stuff that we talk about, it's going to be amazing, but only some of us are going to get through it. And some of us aren't going to make it. So audit your network, people audit your network. Yeah, I think what's really interesting is, is if you went into any restaurant place or dinner place bar uh, that had a real estate meetup, for the last two years, it was the loudest, most joyous, raucous group there. Yeah, high fiving. Yeah, Woo! it was it was a it was a high fiving convention. Exactly. And now it is the it's the library of the restaurant. Yeah, so, yeah. How do I get? You know, people are saying, "How do I get saved?" Oh my God, I owe this money. Mm -hmm. 
Well, again, if you were watching one rental at a time, we've been telling you to prepare lower a lower ARVs. Don't do skinny deals. Don't try to do burrs. Uh, you know, a real estate investing is a great way to build rich. It's not get rich quick. It's get rich for sure. Always do the work. But again, as we have said for years now, when times get good, people stop doing the work and they just gamble. And and the fortunate thing is when they gamble, they win, and right. then they just gamble more. Right. It's, right. And well, then and then they well. and then they gamble bigger. Because they're not gambling 20 bucks every single time that ball goes around that wheel. Now they're gambling 100 and then it's 200 and then it's 500. And then you're like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Walk away, go to bed. Yeah, exactly. You, you need to go upstairs. Yeah, go upstairs. You see that stack? Leave right now because that won't be there in a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of investors and, you know, obviously as, as you and I both do kind of on the weekly, and the things that people are considering to try and put deals together now are ill-advised. They are ill-advised. Stop yeah. trying to force, force the it. issue yeah. and making something happen. We have a standoff in the real estate market. There oh. are some sellers that have to sell and we have some buyers who have to keep their teams going and all this other nonsense. No. It's this winter, this transaction crash is real. We've got to get to March to see where we're at. Yeah. It, uh, don't force it. I like if you're a real estate entrepreneur, like maybe Omar or someone, and you tell me one time, I'm going to buy this skinny deal because I got to keep my team busy. Why don't you just hand them all 3,000 bucks and tell them to go to Disneyland? It might be easier to do. <laughs> I, I mean, just man, what the hell? Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at some of these deals. I had one come across my desk this morning, and you know, the guy goes, What do you think? And I said, Come on, said, you don't really want to know what I think. Yeah. I, just ran, I, I ran the nut. And so I just said, I said, listen, I mean, we'll just walk you through a quick exercise. And so I did it, went through it. And I said, basically, you're saying the building is about 3000 bucks a month in rents. I said, the cost of debt is 2780. Yeah, we're yeah, full stop done. I said, I haven't accounted for a water and sewer bill. I haven't accounted for maintenance. I haven't accounted for anything. I was like, and we're at 220 bucks. I said, and the best part is, even if none of those things happen, which we all know they will, I'm at 220 a month. We'll call it 200 a month, 2,400 bucks a year, 2,700 at the 220 um, or 20, 2,650 or 2,640. Yes. So 2,640 on the entire year, $2,640 on my 100,000 plus closing costs. No, thanks. Yeah, I, run, run. I think I'll go buy a two-year bond. Exactly. That's exactly right. And again, this is- um, And make more money with zero effort. Truly passive income. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. So I think that everybody really needs- And again, brokers are kind of out of practice. They need to be looking at what rates are doing. When they're bringing something to market and they're doing a comp, they're comping it to what last sold on the market maybe 30 days, 60 days, 90 days ago. The rates were two points lower or a point and a half lower. What you need to be doing to calculate what something's worth based on the comp two months ago is not what it sold for, but what the payment was to buy it. That's where people are making the mistake. So that's why you're, so it's literally just a standard of people pricing things based on comp plus that makes it wish pricing because the points, it's another 150 bips or 1.5 in the interest rate that throws all the math off and makes every single deal a bad deal based on wish pricing. Exactly. Are you seeing the same thing, Mike, in deals that are coming across your desk or coming across guys at the hub's desk? Um, it's really weird. So we saw a rush of inventory kind of July and August, like we talked okay. about, right? I said that July 20th was a date it was we're actually seeing inventory fall pretty precipitously. Agreed. Yeah. Now, like if you look at total inventory, it's not really a noticeable drop numbers wise. Cause I think we went from, I'll be close, like 986 to like 981 or something. Okay. But when you slice the mix, my mix of properties, like my buy box, my affordable rentals fell in half. Yeah. And this is because the move up buyer's gone. They're not selling their home mm -hmm. to move up. And uh, that and that means that inventory on the high end is skyrocketing. Hence, my goal of trying to get a park place or boardwalk. I'm I'm going to fish somewhere, and maybe it's in a new spot. So yeah, total inventory for my buy boxes it, it's almost vanished again. It's crazy. 
Yeah, as I was looking at it today, it was exactly the same thing. There's a few out there that are wish pricing. There was one that came in that was decently priced. It was under contract within two days. Mm -hmm. um, but the rest of the stuff was kind of ridiculously priced and you're seeing it in anybody. If you're a broker and you're trying to price a small multifamily, two, three, four unit, mm -hmm. where largely that's not going to be an owner rock deal, do the math first. Yeah, please. Yeah. Have the math conversation with your client and show them, I appreciate that you want 400K for this house, but I need you to do the math. Because at 400K, even with $100,000 down, 25%, and carrying at a 7% mortgage rate for an investor, this property is negative cash flow after expenses. Yeah, we don't do alligators. Yeah. No, I mean, at the end of the day, if I wanted a crappy deal, I can do that any time of the day. Yeah, that's, that's easy. Right. I'll just yeah. throw a dart at the board. Yeah. Exactly. Hi, I'd like to buy your extremely overpriced non-revenue producing asset. Is it I, want to, I want to burn money every month. No, is okay. it still available? <laughs> yeah, crazy. So like I said, hopefully this helps everybody better understand. Again, um, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time. Where can everybody find you, sir? One rental at a time. I do a Saturday live stream from 8 to 9, 60 minutes. Get on early uh, if you'd like to ask a question because I, I usually can't complete, uh, can't get to all of them. That's true. And it is a great time. A lot of the uh, experts show up and help answer questions in line because we know that Mike can't get to all of them. The other thing too is just put out an amazing new video on my channel for, FY, uh, for FYI cost segregation. It is abs or DIY, excuse me, DIY cost segregation is absolutely awesome. They as a special discount code for folks that actually go and do their cost segs there. It's online. You can fill it out in about five or 10 minutes and you have your cost seg report. It's just that simple. And because it's not a person having to go in the field and it's all this extra work, guess what? It's way less expensive. I only talk about products that I do myself and I did these last year. They were in my tax return. And as you'll see in the video, saved me over a hundred thousand bucks. So yeah, I dig it. So hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend. Please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and check out Zuber on his live stream Saturdays at 8 a.m. Pacific time, Lumberjack Landlord Sundays at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, and our good buddy Dion, who will be back in his office for his at 4 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. Y'all have a great day. Thanks so much for watching, and please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Take care.